Hey there, FreshBooks users. This is a quick video to tell you how to split an expense that has come through on your bank transactions. A little bit of background on this. Last Tuesday, I was holding my office hours for FreshBooks users and one of the members said, hey, I have this question. I made a transaction, but it really goes to two different projects. That was the way he needed it to be split was by project. Uh, there was a comments in the chat that people said, yes, this is a great question. Please tell me. I've always wanted to know this. So I want to share with you the answer that I gave them. Let me give just a super quick example of how this might work. Say you're a general contractor and you go to Home Depot's and you know that you are going to be working on projects today and tomorrow and you think I can just buy everything today. You show up at the counter, you ring it up and swipe the card and oops, it's two projects worth of work and potentially two different categories, depending on how you're tracking stuff, that now comes through in one transaction. And we're using cloud technology, so we're using that bank feed to push our transactions over because we don't want to do everything manually. And so now you got this problem because the whole thing is sitting in as an expense when it really could have been thought of as two. So I'm going to jump into the software. I'm going to keep things very simple at first and just tell you how to split them. But you need to watch to the end because we're going to deal with two little uh, potentially hairy issues where you need to think about the sales tax and dividing that. And then also, how do you handle it whenever you made a transaction that was partly for business, but partly for personal in one transaction that the bank sent over? How are you going to do that and still be able to reconcile your account? All right, so let's dive in and figure out how to split transactions in FreshBooks. All right, I'm in FreshBooks actual demo account that I have access to. So this is going to, we're just going to make something up. So this very first transaction here, $139.24, writing that down. Let's say that 100 of it was for one project in one category, and then $39.24 was, was for another category. If you open the transaction this way, there really should be a way to divide up this number, but right now there's not. Even here in the advanced expense settings, there's no way to divide it up. You can't divide, you can't split the category, which you would do here, and you can't split the totals here. You only get one shot at entering that. So let's cancel out of this. So here's what I recommend. You're gonna go here to this duplicate button, and you're able to create a duplicate of this transaction. The date changed to today's date, which is not right. We wanna put that on the fourth. I made a mental note that it was on the fourth. I wrote it down, so you're gonna to have to do that. And we're gonna say that this was the $100, and we wanna assign it to a certain project. We'll come down here and we'll assign it to the ice cream social project. You can add your receipt, you can add a markup if you want, and then we also have to pick the category. Let's say the category for this was equipment, and now we're gonna click save. Okay, so what happens? Now we have this one, and you can see that the source is, is my name. Whenever you hand into a transaction, the source is no longer gonna be the bank account, which is a little confusing, and it, I wouldn't try to do this a lot because it's gonna start to get confusing. So the best practice would be to have created two different transactions for this and avoid this situation, but sometimes we can't. And so then all we have to do is go in and change the number of this. And we're just gonna delete the one here. And then we need to assign this to our project. We'll call it on-demand support. And then let's say, so the first part of it was for equipment. We'll say the other part of it was for hardware. So we click save. So now we have two transactions on the same date that still totaled the amount from the bank. So then you will be able to reconcile. You'll come here to accounting. I recommend skipping this lot because I recommend you don't get so behind or you feel overwhelmed and I think you should do the manual check. So now we're here to reconcile. We'd be able to click this. That's the bank transaction. The left side's the bank. And then we come here. We have the equipment that we hand entered. And then we have the hardware that we modified. We took the $100 off of this one. And you can see that you would be able to match. So I said I had two things to discuss that were a little more complicated. So the first is the sales tax issue. So let's say you had gone to Home Depot, pretend that Churchill one was the was, was Home Depot, and you want to assign it to two different construction projects. A portion of this total is sales tax. A portion of the 139.24 is sales tax, at least in America. And let's call it $5 of that was sales tax. You're going to have some potentially complicated calculations to do if you want to split that sales tax portion out. So uh, you can do it. You could also kind of roughly guess it. 
if you had done the transaction separately, it would be perfect. It would match the transaction with the sales tax exactly because you'd have two receipts for it. So the learning here is that try to not have transactions that you need to split in FreshBooks, especially if you're going to split them between clients for billing purposes, because you would want to be able to show them the, the sales tax portion that was pro properly allocated to them. And then if you're having to show receipts, it could get complicated as well because you have only one receipt with multiple transactions. But, but this does happen. So this is how you would split an expense. The more likely scenario, however, is that you have one transaction and you just want to categorize it differently. It can be the same project. And then it doesn't really matter. So I wouldn't sweat it. I would just you know, pick one, maybe split the tax in half, use like sort of a weighted average that could work too. Don't overthink it. But know that that's going to be a problem. So what I'm challenging you to do is just to avoid that if at all possible. The other much harder problem is what if at the Churchill, again, I don't know exactly what that is, but what if $100 of it was for a business expense that should be assigned to a client and then $39.24 of it was for personal and you need to move it out. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know that I hate this account called personal and I think it's bad accounting and that it should die. But in this instance, this is what we have to use to be able to get that out. So the personal expense portion of that is an owner's draw or a shareholder's distribution. It is the owner of the company taking money out that should have gone from the business to your personal bank account to then pay your vendor, but you didn't do that. You paid it from the business. So it's an, it basically is a balance sheet transaction and you got to get it over there. And the only way to do that is from the bank rec screen. And the only way to do, the only thing we have to work with on the bank rec screen is the full transaction, the full 139.24. Let's just go check it out how to do that. So I came to accounting, going into the bank, skip, always skip, at least for me. I like to skip. So we're here in the bank rec screen. Now we're gonna have only the left side bank transaction clicked and we have to come here and we mark as owner's equity. But see the problem? It's marking the entire 139 as owner's equity. And that's not right. A hundred of it is supposed to be for business in our example. So, so instead what we're gonna do, we're gonna be here in the expenses tab. I'm gonna come over here, click inside of it. I'm gonna categorize this to personal. We will remove the client because there would be no client and we're going to click yes. Uh, this is sending a personal transaction to the income statement, which is not where it belongs. So the way to do that, y'all, this is getting complicated. You have to invite an accountant user, someone like me, or if you watch one of my videos about how to get some special accountant powers, if you know what you're doing with journal entries, you can actually just use a separate email and create accountant access. It's free for you to do that and you'll get the journal entry feature and that's what you have to do. This account is already has the full access so we're going to go to accounting, view your accounts. This is how you get to the journal entry and now we have a new journal entry. All right so I just titled this moving 3924 to the balance sheet we're going to make it, it was April 4th, got to keep the same currency. This is the Canadian demo company. So uh, I would probably just copy this, control C, control V. Now here is how you do this journal entry. Um, most accountants like to do debits first, credit second. So the debit is going to be, we need to reduce our owner's equity by that amount. So we're going to start here. Unfortunately, you can't start typing in this section. I hope they fix that and make the drop down um, searchable but we're going to come about halfway down to owner's equity we will debit this and your debits always have to equal your credits so what we do now is credit personal and that's going to be down in the expenses which are going to be towards the bottom there it is 39.24 if you needed to add a line you could that is sort of heading towards the concept of splitting a transaction where you can you know make multiple things add up but um, this is probably the most advanced journal entry y'all are going to want to do. Uh, otherwise, you're probably going to want to get help unless you have studied accounting. We'll click save. Now I'm going to come to reports. And I click this compare dates button and I picked the day before and the day of the journal entry. And we're going to click apply. We should get two columns, which we do. And if you come down here to owner's equity, so I don't know what this 1492 was, but somehow the FreshBooks team, when they have built this test account, they had put 40, 
1492 in as an owner's as a decreased owner's equity and we just added right here 5416 is the total now which is an additional 3924 that we added the other place we want to check is that on april 4th there is no transactions in personal so let's go see that on the income statement back in reports coming to profit and loss sorry profit and loss income statement you can use interchangeably I'm filtering here by April 4th for the single day, and you can see that personal has zero in it now, and it, it would have if we had not made that journal entry. So to summarize, try your hardest to create separate transactions for different categories or for different projects, since FreshBooks doesn't have the ability to split transactions. Really, really try to avoid putting anything personal if you are going to have a transaction that you're going to have to split. Don't sweat the sales tax issue too much. Um, sales tax is a business expense in America, at least. There's some funky stuff that FreshBooks has where you can like add your tax in on your expenses, and I don't really understand that, so maybe it's a Canadian thing. But the sales tax issue will come into play if you need to allocate that exactly correctly to your particular clients, and you need to bill them for that. But if not, don't sweat it. Kind of use some, you know, hand math, just sort of get it right, or put even put it all to one if you if you need to. It's not that big of a deal. The percentage is going to be really small, so it's not going to really throw off your reports necessarily. And that's my advice about how to split transactions in FreshBooks as of April 2022. If you need help with FreshBooks, please reach out. If you would like to be a member of my weekly office hours. You can reach out about that as well. You can be a part of the group that made this question come to light that made me realize I should probably make a video about it. But we talk all about a lot of stuff in there that really helps the members. And so if you're still watching, you are a dedicated FreshBooks user. So I want to point you down to the description below also for my weekly checklist of how to do your bookkeeping tasks in FreshBooks. And I'll also point you to a video called Five Ways Your FreshBooks is Wrong, which will be a little health check for you. Watch that video with your FreshBooks up on the screen and check and see if you are doing things correctly and reach out if you need help. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson and I help businesses build their business legacy.